Hello, hello, hello. In this video, we are going to go through a quick UEFI OEM install of Ubuntu 21.10 in VirtualBox. Let's get this started. I've already set up the basic settings. As you can see, it is UEFI. I've turned off the floppy drive, given it six gigs of RAM, two processor cores, and just a 10 gig virtual hard drive. And we will set that as solid state bridge networking. So let's go ahead and get this moving. Okay, so we just choose OEM install, which is a third option. And this is going to be just a little different for a couple of reasons. First, we're using UEFI instead of the standard BIOS, so that accounts for some of the differences you're seeing on your screen compared to other videos I've done uh, with different versions of Ubuntu in VirtualBox. The questions that are going to be asked during this OEM install are also a little different. The nice thing though is that you can set this up and deploy it out to many different kinds of machines. And this is great if you are repurposing some older machines. Perhaps you've got some for instance, Dell Optiplex machines that you know aren't going to be able to run Windows 11. What better use for them than to put on a version of Linux and if you do the OEM install, you can push that image to all the machines. So we're giving it a name here for the batch of systems that we're going to do. I'm just going to call it test OEM and say continue. This is the same as a normal install keyboard layout. And we'll go ahead and install third party software. And I have to say, I am I am pretty impressed with the install for. I have to say that I am pretty impressed with the install for Ubuntu 21.10. Uh, it does feel a little faster than previous versions, and that may be because of their new installer. Okay, install now. Continue. Correct time zone. Okay, so as you can see, it's giving a temporary user. And of course, the password is going to be temporary as well. I may experiment doing this in the future with Active Directory and joining it to Zenchel uh, because then every machine that this image would get deployed to would be joined to that Zenchel domain, which could be an interesting experiment.
All right, we've reached the end of the install. We are going to do a restart. Go ahead and kick that off. I'm going to make sure that Should have ejected the install media. <laughs> All right, so you can think of this environment that we're in right now as being something similar to what you would be using when prepping a window system for sysprep. So you can do installation of software, you can do updates and other customizations. Uh, some of them will stick. Uh, some of the customizations will not be saved. So I I have never had the the documentation for this. So I've just kind of I I've learned this on my own through trial and error. Uh, if I were going to do this on a large number of systems, I would absolutely be looking at the documentation and coming up with a repeatable process so that when I had to update the image, I could match what I used uh, the first time around or improve the process. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and do these updates. And there shouldn't be much in the line of updates, but we'll humor it and let it do its thing. So we're up to date now. So one thing I want to have installed, if it's not already, is NeoFetch. And this should be pretty quick to install. And we might go into the Ubuntu App Store and look for one or two items there and install those and then we can 
go ahead and prep our VM to be cloned and we can see the equivalent of the out-of-box experience uh, for Windows. So let's uh, jump into the store here real quick. This may take a minute to populate. but we'll see what we can find and pick a couple things to install. So let's go ahead and install a couple of items. We'll install Audacity. And I don't know, let's come down to games and see if we can install something else in here too of course it's not populated so the moral of the story is this app store although slightly revamped is a little bit slow on first use so we'll install dark table as well People typically do photo editing on computers. So once these are installed, I will go ahead and do the final process and then we can clone it and go through the new user out of box type setup. Okay, let's go ahead and close out of the App Store and we'll prepare for shipping to end user. Okay, the OEM config will run the next time the system boots. All right, so from here we shut down. We'll clone the VM. All right, we'll just call it Ubuntu 2010 OEM test. Continue. It's going to be a full clone. We've got our test VM here. We'll go ahead and get that started. And hopefully I don't lose power. Okay, so basically this is what you would see with a brand new machine running Ubuntu. And so for all those eBay sellers out there, this isn't rocket science. If you're selling a machine on eBay with a hard drive and you're not including Windows, 
throw Ubuntu on here, do the OEM install, and give the user a new computer experience. English, New York time zone, going to go through a little bit of configuration but in reality this should be quicker than doing a full system install in practice we'll see what happens All right, so it's restarting one more time. And we can go ahead and log in. And it prompts us for the little first start wizard, which we're just going to go ahead and click through this. Uh, you can open up a terminal. It does in fact have NeoFetch installed. And we installed Darktable, which is right there, and Audacity, which would not have otherwise come with the standard base Ubuntu install. So, we have a working image. I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. There are a couple of things that I'm going to do in upcoming videos. First, I'll export this test VM, since it's UEFI, and I will import it into proxmox and verify that it works second i will be capturing an image using rescuezilla from the 2110 oem vm and i will use that to deploy that image to a another machine now i am in fact intending to test this with a physical machine and it should work just fine for a number of reasons. Uh, one, because Linux redetects hardware very well. And two, because, you know, that's the way a lot of people build their universal Windows images anyways. They install it on a virtual machine first, where they've got the snapshotting capabilities and all that at their disposal. And then they deploy to real hardware. And this generally speeds up the process. So that will do it for this video. If you got something out of this and made it to the end of this video, thank you. If you are not subscribed, please go down below, like and subscribe, and feel free to share this video with your friends or coworkers or anyone you know that might find it of interest or value. And on that note, again, thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video.